this finale gave us what we probably all should have expected from an MCU story where, you know, we get the full manifestation of a battle. We actually get to see the full visual effects and everything, like a really good action sequence. I was mildly disappointed just because some of my theories did not pan out. But at the end of the day, the entire story is just about Wanda and her grief and how she's processing that grief. And if you take all of that into account, then I think that they put a nice bow on that story while simultaneously giving us something to look forward to in Doctor Strange. It's kind of a little bit what I expected. Uh, I want to say that I'm a little disappointed in myself for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, they literally had in the beginning, they had that she would use the runes to stop uh, Agatha <laughs> and they did a great job of making me forget. So kudos to them. I like saw it coming and still forgot about it. Agatha, she suffered the worst fate of all and that's to be stuck in New Jersey forever and ever. Uh, so <laughs> unfortunate for her. Um, it was a fun ride. Uh, I do want to say all of the nonsense that Kevin Feige made me think of, like the commercials were Infinity Stones, Mephisto, mm -hmm. Nightmare, Genesis. All, shout out to all of you Marvel characters that are not in the Marvel Universe yet. Uh, Kevin Feige did a great job of making us search for the clues and dig for the clues and play Sherlock Holmes. And it was a lot of fun, even though he pulled the rug out from under us. I actually thought he did Ryan Johnson better than Ryan Johnson, where he oh, basically wow. was like, <laughs> you're right, you know what I mean? This is like, you know what? All your theories are nonsense, but I'm still gonna give you a great full hour of action and entertainment. Very true. I, I I feel like my opinion on the first two episodes are slightly different than yours. Like the first episode, the second episode was definitely weaker, but that's when the story started to reveal itself. Uh, in terms of the finale though, for me, there were a lot of things I did like, but I think overall I was a little disappointed with how things were wrapped up. But I, 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 see, I see a lot of the points. This was Wanda's story. This was right. meant to set up her appearance and ramifications in both Spider-Man 3 and Doctor Strange 2. But at the same time, for me, I was very much let down by the lies from the actors. Like Paul Bettany said, oh, there's this yeah. actor I've wanted to work with a long time. Oh, it was just himself. Elizabeth also saying, oh yeah, there's gonna be a Luke Skywalker style cameo in this. It really wasn't unless you right. count White Vision, but right. I, I really don't. There were questions that were still left unanswered, but then the questions that we did get answered to me, I felt like we got very unsatisfactory uh, questions like, oh, Evan Peters was just Ralph. He wasn't yeah. anybody else. What happened to White Vision? He just shot off into the sky and we don't know where he is now. And has Wanda's crossed over to the dark side. It looks like they're setting that up. Right. That's something I definitely am fine with. That's a tease I can't wait to see fully developed in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. But overall, I liked the finale, but there are a lot of things that I wish would have happened differently and wish would have had more satisfactory answers given. They threw the red herrings in there, like, sure. oh, the devil's in the detail. Like, what is that line? Like, you right. know, the demon's and, uh, you know, that's not the only place where the devil is and all the right. nonsense. I think that just because our theories didn't pan out in the show, they haven't necessarily been dispelled. Some of the theories that we have discussed in past on-air discussions, those things have not necessarily been quelled. And it could be that they're revealed in later releases. You know, something might happen in Spider-Man 3, something might happen in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. The MCU is sort of designed to be one long trail of a story. And so even though this is a television series, it's probably just one piece of a larger story that will be revealed maybe even several years from now. Or even like, you know, Agatha's vague you don't know what you've unleashed. Like, yeah, we don't know either. What did you unleash? Right. Tell us. We want to know. That's another thing we got to remember is MCU kind of likes to tell the story out of order. Like, for example, right. WandaVision, it's set seven months before Spider-Man Far From Home. Right. I didn't know that until I that was revealed on in like an article or something. But Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'm guessing that's going to take place roughly around the same time, if not closer to modern day as it is now. Right. I don't know. I felt like the biggest theory slash expectation of this uh, finale was that we were going to either see Nightmare or Mephisto 
pulling the strings or like being Ma uh, Agatha Harkness's master. And that's kind of how it was in the comics. And we know the MCU only like takes small tidbits from plot lines and ad adapts them. But right. they were, I feel like they were laying in like the hints like, oh, uh, the devil's in the details. That's not the only place where he is. Unleash hell, demon spawn. There was a lot of <laughs> hints that, that led toward either of those characters appearing. And while, yes, I do believe Nightmare is somewhat confirmed, if not unofficially confirmed, to be the villain of Doctor Strange 2, it just would have been nice to see either a visual tease or just like a name drop to see, like, yes, this character is still coming, but he right. wasn't a part of the show. Right, and I agree. That was one of the things that sort of disappointed me, you know, because I kind of expected, you know, to see that on, on some level. Another disappointment that I had was that I really wanted to see monica rambeau like fully go at it like with her powers yeah you I know agree. you know we got a small morsel of what i assume is you know what's to come in captain marvel 2. yes but it would have been nice for her to get a moment in this absolutely yeah we started seeing like honestly kind of from the be uh from when we first get introduced to monica rambeau and not geraldine we see like, oh, she is a good person at heart. And when she breaches through the hex to go back in, that's when you see like, yes, this character is a hero. She's doing whatever it takes to make sure A, Wanda's okay, and B, she survives whatever Hayward was gonna try and do to her. And we get a small tidbit of her powers when Wanda threw her down in episode seven. She like just right. superhero landed. But I agree, it would have been nice to see her join in in the final battle and just started using her, her powers as either Photon or Spectrum, whichever mantle she decides to pick up. But right. I, I do I do believe that they're just saving her for Captain Marvel 2. What were your thoughts on the second post credit scene? I like the two after credit scenes a lot, and I think yeah. that that's going to tie into Multiverse of Madness, and it makes me more excited for that to be like the real season finale. Right when we started pushing in through the landscape and then we see the cabin, I got a lot of Incredible Hulk vibes because that was very much how that yeah, movie ended. I thought so the same thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, it was, we're going down the same route. We see her walk in and then we see, oh, there's two of her. So then that made me think, oh, she's like Agatha said, she's more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. Not only can she split her consciousness, her other consciousness can continue to do mundane daily tasks while her aspherical self can still learn dark magic from the dark hold. You know, we saw Stephen Strange do that in the first movie where he was able to give his physical body rest while being in the astral plane and he's sort of studying these incantations. Right. It's, it's almost as if she kind of discovered the same thing and is now sort of embracing that. Right, and that's another thing. How far in the future does this post credit scene take place? Because she, she didn't just find that cabin and make tea the first thing she got there. And though this had right. this had to have been like at least, I want to say at least three months in the future. So we'll see if this catches up with Falcon and Winter Soldier, if this catches up with Spider-Man, or this is where Doctor Strange finds her in Multiverse of Madness. Right. Anything else you want to add? I do think the acting in the overall series was incredible between the three main actors of Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, and Catherine yeah. Hahn. All three of those actors were in, gave incredible performances, particularly Elizabeth Olsen during the, these last few episodes, showing the incredible emotive acting from her. Overall, you know what? I'm going to rewatch this whole series now with this new set of eyes and then like judge it on that, knowing what happened. I think it was a good series, man. It was a good series. I was excited to go on this journey and right. um, I'd like to go revisit it again. For me in particular, I need to watch the first two episodes again because there's gotta be breadcrumbs in there that I missed because I really didn't understand what was going on at the time. But now that we have the larger narrative, yeah, it's definitely going to be uh, a more interesting watch and I'm eager to see how this plays into the multiverse of madness. That said, as far as like rating this finale, uh, actually rating the entire series, what kind of a grade would you give it? And then if you had to take that grade and give it a number, like A through F and then one through 10. Okay, um, WandaVision as, as a whole series, I would definitely give this series either a B plus or an A minus. The, the acting, the visuals, and the storytelling for the most part was incredible. There were minor things that probably either should have been given better answers or given more time to develop in the story. But 
I still fully enjoyed this entire series. And at one out of 10, I would definitely give this a seven and a half. Lulls in the beginning, lulls at different times, uh, but overall very creative. So I, I would go with a B or an eight. Okay. And I would do a similar score. I would probably give it a B minus just because I really didn't enjoy those first two episodes at all. You know, I, it was one of those things where if I really didn't have faith in the series, I would have just quit right then. But because I know Feige and because I know to expect something great, ultimately, I was like, well, let me just ride it out. And I was happy that I did. You know, if I'm giving it a letter score, I would give it a maybe a B minus. I would give it uh, an eight if I was giving it a numerical score for the same reason. The whole thing is just, you know, it's mind blowing. We could probably talk about this for hours, but yeah, just to wrap this up, do you have any final thoughts about the series overall? Um, I, I really liked it. I'm glad uh, Marvel's using this, uh, using Disney Plus as a, a new platform to provide us with more content from these characters. Uh, I cannot wait to see what else comes from Falcon and Winter Soldier and then their theatrical releases later this year. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what the MCU has in store for us for phase four. They took a huge risk. That's yeah. to be applauded. <laughs> they didn't go the standard route with the, the first three episodes. For me, it was a rocky start with this series, but ultimately, you know, it wrapped up quite well. It didn't quite meet my expectations, but then again, these expectations were a little bit outside of the point of the story. And so for that, I definitely excuse it. I'm eager to see now that we have a full-blown Scarlet Witch, what does that mean for the larger MCU? And a white vision. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I will say this. I mean, the stakes were real. I almost cried. I had like a little bit of an Agatha, Agatha level tear where uh, when she cried in uh, episode eight. <laughs> I kind of, it was kind of like that. It was, oh, wow. Yeah, no, that was right. powerful. But, all right. You're, you're in. You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on and uh, for doing this. Man. Absolutely. You know, I'm on short notice. I'm like right in my car, but that's how that's dedication that shows you. I wanted to that's get it. Yeah, that's man. it. Maximum <laughs> fandom. <laughs> yeah.